The African continent is fast realizing that there is a big need for affordable and reliable interconnectivity to make it one of the leading investment destinations globally. The aviation business has a big role to play there. It's also been reported that African skies are most profitable and with that comes a whole lot of challenges. One of the biggest challenges that the faces the airlines at the moment is keeping their costs under control. Um, at the moment, the industry is directly impacted by huge cost increases, notably the fuel uh, increase, and we are getting used to fuel oil prices of over $100 per barrel, which is something that was pretty much unheard of, say, 10, 12 years ago. And at the same time, we are, there are other increasing costs, such as the airport charges, air traffic service charges, weather service charges, and, and all those uh, other charges which impact directly on the operating costs of the, of the airlines. The fuel prices uh, currently are at very high levels, which are very detrimental to the profitability of airlines, which is just too high uh, to make airlines uh, profitable. Uh, it means either they have to uh, add additional cost to the price of a ticket, which then discourages air travel, which makes you, you increase the burden on the passengers. By putting the costs up, it's not balanced by an increase necessarily of revenue, where the yields, and that's the fares that effectively the airlines are able to charge, are not being able to be increased to the same extent that the costs are increasing. So again, it's a question of the airlines looking at, at cost effectivity and um, productivity in such a way that they can try and keep profitability margins there. AFRA is unhappy about the blacklisting of African airlines and the organization feels that the EU is politicizing the issue of safety. Airlines like Air Madagascar and La Mozambique Airlines which are on the blacklist. However, these airlines have a very good safety record. They are IOSA certified. They are there to industry best practices in terms of safety and security. Now, this shows that the blacklist appear to be unfair. It, uh, the process in which such airlines are put on the blacklist is unclear. Few people know why they are on the blacklist. How, what's the point of having IOSA when at the end of the day, airlines which are daring to industry best practice are also blacklisted. The other airlines, uh, in certain countries like the DRC and, and the like, where the country's civil aviation authority is blacklisted by the European Union for reasons which are not very, very clear. Perhaps they say the airspace is, is, is not safe. Perhaps the airport is not safe. There are systems which they have which are not safe. But what surprises is that if indeed an airport is not safe, why would carriers from the EU come to fly to those same airports which are not safe? It looks as if the EU might be doing this for commercial reasons. African skies are not only filled with doom and gloom, there are ample opportunities for a thriving business. But where the growth has been is in new, um, new uh, routes into Africa, because there it's particularly underserviced. And another area where you've had growth is is to smaller outlying places um, where, where you, you, there, there is also a need for, for stronger air links as, as such. Um, and so what has happened is you've seen an, an increasing uh, footprint, for instance, um, of, of airlines flying to uh, different places in Africa, not necessarily just connecting capitals, but also tourist destinations as well. And that, that in a sense, helps the expansion because you need to get a certain critical mass of air links and air travel uh, for it to be worthwhile for um, uh, business and, and also tourist flows. And so into, into Africa where it was largely serviced, Africa was largely serviced from outside Africa. If you needed to fly to um, Algeria, you'd do it via Europe, for instance, and that kind of thing. Increasingly, those links have been um, been uh, expanding. Another area which has been expanding and has the potential for expansion is what, what we 
call in economic terms the South-South links, in other words, South Africa with Brazil, South Africa with India, South Africa with China, for instance, and those links themselves uh, have huge potential for growth. At this stage, uh, the, the international air links is uh, especially domestically driven, is largely Eurocentric. That's where the, the, the bulk is there, and a little bit to North America, etc. But um, where we are expanding, where our trade is also expanding, is with the other BRIC countries and other um, emerging market countries. So those are the, where the, the opportunities lie. The yields on the continent are good. There are many city pairs on the continent which are not connected or which are connected with one or two flights per week, which is too low. So these are opportunities to exploit. And you find that operators, many airlines from outside Africa are realizing, they are noticing these opportunities. That's why you find that Africa is one of the few continents, the few areas in the world where airlines can make money. A part of the continent that appears to be exploiting those opportunities is Southern Africa. The aviation industry in the region is said to be in a fairly healthy state. In South Africa, there are eight domestic airlines competing with each other. Four of those are trying to grab the low-cost slice of the pie, while the other four appears to be comfortable in the full-price arena. A fifth low-cost carrier could enter the market before the end of the year, and that's run by Santaco. So that would make a, a very interesting uh, new development with probably a new niche market opening up uh, specifically to, to um, be able to accommodate uh, taxi commuters flying between Johannesburg and Johannesburg area and say Bishu or Matata for example. Um, within the SADC region there is also a healthy um, situation with uh, airlines flying between all the neighboring states and South Africa and also to other states as well. The airlines in those areas are, many of them are, are developing well, they are replacing new aircraft and competing pretty much with the Southern African, the South African carriers which are also um, developing and growing um, in leaps and bounds.